Hi everyone and welcome to another recipe video. And today I'm making this rather crazy looking but easier than it looks to make strawberry and ube batter bird cake and ube's purple sweet potato in case you don't know. Now I did try to make my own marzipan here and I've done it several times but I over blended it and it turned into a terrible oily mess so we're not actually going to use that today. Let's, so let's just uh, let's just get rid of that and never speak of it again. And instead I'm going to use some store-bought marzipan. This is good stuff, they don't use too many weird tasting additives. So right, let's begin. First, as usual, you're going to preheat your oven to 180 degrees C. And now the interesting bit, we're going to prepare a normal square tin so that it has two halves down the middle. And this is why you don't need a special tin to make Battenberg cake, so don't worry about wasting money, just using an ordinary 8 inch square tin. And as you can see I've cut a strip of baking paper that's a bit longer than the tin. Now I'm going to oil the tin so that the paper sticks down and of course so the exposed sides of cake don't stick to the tin too. And we're going to pop that paper in the middle so that it creates a physical divide so you have two clean halves of cake. And having a quick look on the internet, Battenberg cake tins which have their own metal divider cost around 15 to 20 pounds, so you really are saving a good amount. Right, moving on, adding 170 grams of cast sugar and butter, which has been softened to room temperature, and we're going to cream that until nice and fluffy. Uh, some people add all of the sponge ingredients to the bowl at one time and beat it all together, and apparently that works too. This is just the way I've always done it. I always cream the butter and sugar first. And I think it gives a really nice and fluffy cake. So once the butter and sugar mixture is pale and fluffy, we're going to add three eggs and beat it even more. And when you're beating the eggs in, it might appear to curdle the butter, but don't worry, once you add the flour in afterwards, it all comes together nice and smooth. Without all the fancy flavourings, this is just a bog standard sponge cake mixture. You could not add the ube and the strawberry and just pour this into a cake tin and make a Victoria sponge. So now we're adding 170 grams of self-raising flour and a pinch of salt just to bring out that flavour and three tablespoonfuls of milk just for a slightly softer sponge. And we're going to whisk that in again but this time we're going to whisk it only until it's just combined because we don't want to beat all that air out that we created when we creamed the butter and sugar together. So beat it until it's just combined. Now we're going to take that batter and split it into two to make our two flavours. If you want to be exact, you can weigh the two bits of cake batter. I kind of wish I did this because I had a bit more strawberry than ube, which we'll see in a minute. But it doesn't matter because you're going to cut it down to size anyway. So rough is fine. Now we're going to flavour one with ube. As you can see, this one doesn't need any extra food colouring, it's already really pigmented. I'm going to whisk this in and actually I regret using the beaters for this because like I said once you add the flour in you're going to start to lose the air bubbles the more you beat it so it's at this point I realise oh crap I shouldn't have done that and I switch to my spatula and you will see after baking that the purple side is a little bit denser. So for the strawberry side which I'm adding here I literally just go in with my spatula no whisk. I'm adding a bit extra pink food colouring because the flavouring isn't that pigmented. So here I'm just using a gentle folding motion to incorporate the colour and the flavour and I'm keeping as much air as possible. Now on the flip side, because I was successful at keeping the air in the strawberry one, it was domed after it baked. But again, doesn't matter, we're going to cut it all to size. So now we've got our two sides of cake batter. We're going to put the ube on one side and the strawberry on the other. And you might think, Tash, that's only two blocks, how do you get the four? And that is because we're going to cut each in half so we have four logs, which we'll see in a minute. So I'm just attempting to evenly divide the cake and trying not to crumple the paper too much. Now I'm going to bake it for 25 minutes and then let it cool completely before moving on. Now another great thing about the paper is you can easily lift it out of the tin like so. Well, I say it easy, I'm clearly struggling here, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just my ineptness. You can see how strong and bright the flavours are. Right, now it's time to cut it to size, and this is why it doesn't matter if you're not exactly half-half when you divide the batter. So I'm just going to trim them down on each side, and this will reveal the really bright colour as well when you slice the whole cake later so you have less brown sides. Now I'm splitting it down the middle lengthways, and this will create the two logs of ube. 
and you can see the cake's a little bit dense inside. Remember, that's because I used the beaters for a bit too long on the Ube side. Who's messaging me? Shush, switch off notifications. Anyway, we're going to do this for both sides of the cake and do not throw away those scraps. They make excellent snacks, tasty snacks, or you can blend them up and make cake pops out of them. I'm not actually a big fan of cake pops myself. I find them really dense and sweet because you have to mush them up with icing and that's just not my cup of tea. I know they're really pretty and really popular though, but just not for me. But they are an option if you want to use that leftover cake. So you can see the strawberry side has more strawberry and it's domed because I successfully kept air in it so I'm going to shave it down. And if you've noticed that my thumb is a bit weird, don't worry I haven't broken it, I'm just double jointed in just that thumb for some reason so if you see sometimes that it's sticking out at a very worrying angle don't worry it doesn't hurt that's just how my thumb is. Now I've got some warm strawberry jam and I'm going to paint the sides because now we're going to stick the cake together. This is my favourite part. So we've got ube on one side, strawberry on the other, a little more jam and now we're going to stick the ube on the opposite side and the strawberry on the other side and that gives us the checkerboard effect. And the jam also helps keep the cake moist too so win-win. Now we're going to roll out the marzipan, so dust a little bit of icing sugar on a clean work surface to stop it from sticking. And here I have only 200 grams of marzipan, but trust me, you need the full 400 grams because you're not going to be able to roll out enough, which I made that mistake. You'll see what I mean. So roll it out relatively thinly until it will cover the cake which I haven't done here and I'm starting to realize oh no I should have used the whole block but I persevered and I'm just going to brush it with a little more jam so I can stick that cake down but not the whole thing because I want to use some of that leftover marzipan for making roses later which I'll show you how to do of course there was no leftover marzipan <laughs> in this 200 gram block but thankfully I had the other 200 grams handy and waiting for the roses. So now that I've made that surface nice and sticky, let's plop the cake on. And I was worried that the cake would fall apart, but the jam does a really good job of gluing it together. It's on there quite sturdily. Now I'm going to cover the rest of the sides with more jam. And you don't have to use warm jam, it just helps loosen it up to make it easy to paint on get all the sides, get any spaces between the cake and now roll your cake up and this is this is where <laughs> I'm cursing myself for not using the whole 400 gram block because there are gaps but you know what there are worse things in life it's not too hard to sort out all I had to do once I squished this together nice and firmly was roll out a few extra pieces of marzipan so that is exactly what I did here just give the sides a good squish to make sure it's stuck down nice and firmly. And if you had used the full 400 grams here, now what you would do is you would trim off the excess marzipan. But here, as you can see, I'm doing the opposite. I'm adding more marzipan because it needs it. But that was relatively easy and all I have to do to hide the imperfection is roll it over. Nice and easy. I'm just dusting off the rest of the icing sugar and slicing off the edges so we have nice neat edges and we can reveal that beautiful pattern inside. Look at that, gorgeous! And Mr Tash Cakes was eagerly waiting on the sidelines for this slice. Now I'm slicing my own chef's perk to reveal the other end and it is equally gorgeous. I'm so happy with that. Right, so now we have some leftover marzipan. Let's make some roses. We're going to colour it with a bit of pink food colouring and I'm just doing it over some more icing sugar because it does get a little sticky. Using modelling icing is a lot easier than using marzipan but since this is what we have I don't like to waste so we'll just make the roses out of marzipan. Now the first thing you want to do is to make the bud of the rose so get a little ball of marzipan and we're going to roll it into a little sausage and flatten it out a bit. And I'm just taking a bit more icing sugar because it's getting very sticky indeed. So I'm flattening out the sausage. I'm going to roll it up just to make the very centre of the bud. Just like this. Next we're going to make the petals and I'm going to start with three. So I'm going to take three small balls like this. 
then flatten them out. I'm just doing it really roughly here. Don't have to be exact. Flatten each out into a petal and then we want to stick them around that bud in the middle with each petal overlapping a bit. And that's basically how you make icing roses. You just do this over and over again until you have the size flower you want. I start with the one bud in the middle, followed by three petals around that, followed by five, and then I go by odd numbers, but really it doesn't matter. Just keep adding petals until you arrive at a shape you like. Now I also use some homemade Pandan Royal icing leaves to decorate the cake, which I actually made for my homemade pineapple tarts recipe, so I'll link that recipe above here in the cards and below so you can see how to make those too. Those are also super easy. But when you're ready, all you have to do is stick your roses on top of your cake with a little water and you're done. And this recipe is pretty versatile, you don't have to do ube and strawberry, you can use any two flavours you like. Thanks for watching and or listening. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found something in it useful, and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get full recipes for all of these videos on my blog tashcakes.com, and find me on Instagram as tashcakestastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular, and I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, be nice, and have a good week.